Alright, okay, KYL well, with the immersive at 50 meters. They're getting hard to see. Just. <laughs> oh, I can't see that left one with the sun there. Digital zoom. Just. <laughs> Starting to get a bit miragey out there. Yeah, guys, today we're gonna to be looking at a new optic that I've recently been playing with. It's an Element Immersive 14 by 50 fixed power prismatic rifle scope. It's a zero eye relief, no recoil model. So it's designed for rim fires and air guns. And yeah, I've had a bit of time in the field with it now. Shot a few targets, shot a few critters with it, and we'll give you a bit of a look at it. So the reason I bought this scope was they're sort of widely different than anything else that's available on the market now. And all the videos I'd seen on them, they didn't actually have any side-by-side -side comparisons to a traditional optic. I was interested enough and it was cheap enough that I thought it was worth taking a chance for. So these are currently retailing around the $1,100 Australian mark. So they're not obscenely expensive for what they are. And again, they do sort of fit a very niche role. Comparatively to my NX-8, with this being a fixed 14 power, the field of view is very similar to my NX-8 on six times power. Okay, and just to run through the zoom range, that's the KYL at four times. That's 14 there. And then that's at 32. hard to describe without actually looking through it. The best comparison from home is probably to look through a pair of binoculars and then look at a rifle scope on the same magnification. And that's basically what it's like looking through these. You do have to get a little bit creative mounting them on a rim fire or uh, even some air rifles, it depends on your base setup. But as you can see, you need to extend the scope back a long way to actually get the correct eye relief. So it does have a few little quirks there about actually setting it up and making it workable on a standard rifle. The other way I was running it quite a lot when I was testing it was actually mounting it forward in the traditional position and using the scope cam. So because of that, you could maintain a standard hold and it made it quite easy to use and get good footage through. Let's go through some pros and cons. All right, we'll start with the turrets. So the turret clicks are actually really nice. They're mil and MOA models. I've got this one in mil because I'm in a metric country and have finally converted everything to mil, which I should have done about 20 years ago. But really nice clicks, exposed turrets on the elevation, capped on the windage. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about these is they're a six mil per rotation and they don't have a rotation indicator. So it is possible to get lost. It also doesn't have a zero stop on it, but you can mitigate that by the inclination mount, which I'll show a few photos of up close or videos. And then all I've done is zero the scope where the last time it goes over zero is on the lowest elevation dial down and then the rest of it's all upwards so you can just dial it down until you bottom the scope out and then go back to your first zero not quite as nice as a proper zero stop but it works pretty good the glass on it's actually really really good so another benefit to a prismatic scope is there's less lenses uh, distorts the light less each time it passes through so the glass is actually really really nice you will notice in the videos that this um, Filming through the phone does actually degrade the quality of the image a bit, both on the Immersive and the NX-8, but that's sort of not much we can do about that, and it's more about just giving you an idea of the field of view. When you open up the box for these, you'll notice that it comes with three different extension rails, so you can extend it out, cantilever it a bit. None of the included ones are actually long enough to mount on a bolt-action rifle, so you can see the great big long cantilever mount that I've made for it there. 
just got a pick rail clamp on the bottom and a bit of pick rail on the top there. That is a bit of a downside, so it does make it a lot more difficult for anyone to just grab one and mount it up. You've sort of got to be committed to the idea and know for sure that you actually want to run it. The other issue with that is you also hugely increase your height over bore. So yeah, if you don't have an adjustable cheek piece, it can make things a bit funny. It also does throw your rifle balance back a little bit, but if they're not things you're concerned about or you want to throw weights up the front to correct your balance, it's not the end of the world. It's just something to take in mind. The scope does also have parallax and illumination. The illumination is just a push button style where you push it to turn it on. I believe it's got five or six power levels and then you hold it to turn it off. It worked okay. There was a little bit of glare in certain lighting conditions and I don't like the push button illuminations anywhere near as much as a rotating potentiometer style one, but it's better than having none at all. The Parallax or focus adjustment, I believe technically they're just a focus because of the way these work, I don't think you can actually get parallax errors. Not 100% certain, but I did read that on the internet, so take it with a grain of salt. But it is adjustable down to six meters, so for your air gun guys and rimfire guys, you can get right in close and yeah, shoot close targets if that's sort of in the target shooting discipline you're doing or pest control. I did find the focus on it very finicky, so Quite a shallow depth of focus and it was a bit touchy to get perfect at times, but once you got it dialed, it was very crisp. That gong's at 275 metres. Let's see how we go. Impact. Did also include lens cap. So your front one, you've got a flip out plastic cap. The rear one has a rubber eye piece cover that just pulls down. And it also has written on the back of the eyepiece cover, recoilless only, so you don't accidentally mount it on a 300 wind mag. These come with two different reticle designs and obviously mill and MOA, so they've got the reticles corresponding for which turret style you buy. Uh, they're both fairly basic plain reticles, so you haven't got a Christmas tree or anything like that, but they work good enough for the purpose. I think most people are probably gonna be dialing elevation most of the time now anyway, but they are, yeah, very nice, clean, easy to use reticles, very clearly marked, and because of the wide field of view, you get a huge amount of holdover. So that was another really interesting thing with these. So with the inclination mount, which you can either pull the scope off or if you cantilever it back enough, you can get to the underside. You can actually cantilever it up, dial your elevation, then use massive amounts of holdover. So I roughly calculated if I use all the available elevation, holdover, and inclination, I can get out to about 700 metres with the 22. As we've seen before, that's pretty hit and miss, but it is possible. You obviously saw that. Hey! Oh, hey! Got it! <laughs> yes! I did also notice moving the inclination, you did obviously have a bit of windage shift, but it's possible if you're spotting hits. Return to zero, so when we're testing it, following the manufacturer's specs of 50 inch pounds for the cross bolt screws, I was getting slight zero shifts on the windage. So it was normally moving between 0.2 and 0.3 of a mil on windage fairly consistent. I end up trying at a lower inch pound setting and it seems to have improved it quite a bit. So instead of 50 inch pounds, I've dropped it back to 30. Seems a little bit more consistent. If you're gonna be jumping it, I'd definitely recommend testing that before just throwing it on and off and seeing what happens and trying to shoot animals or targets. But I did think that was worth mentioning. A lot of people probably aren't gonna be jumping these scopes, but if you are, keep it in mind. On the supplied scope rings, it comes with four mounting points for an accessory rail, although it doesn't actually come with an accessory rail. So I've just 3D printed one so I can mount the scope cam up and get all the footage through that. I did think that was sort of a bit of a strange sales choice to not include the rail instead of the three different mounts. I think they could probably nearly forego one of the mounts and just have the rail instead. I reckon a lot of people are probably gonna benefit from that more, but I don't know. That uh, did seem a bit strange to me to have so many options on the mounting front and then no accessory rail for yeah, either a red dot or camera. One thing I found pretty strange when I was actually using it, which I didn't think of beforehand was Although you gain a massive field of view out here through the scope, you lose all your peripheral vision actually at the eyepiece. So you've got to be 
bit more attentive to what's going on directly around you. So say, I don't know, you're shooting past a tree and a cow walks out and it's outside the field of view of your scope or someone walks past. Look, unlikely scenarios, but I didn't sort of, yeah, foresee that. It's quite similar to shooting through a digital scope in that regard. So if you're using the extension eyepieces, you'll know what I'm talking about. You can pull that off, but I found it a bit weird trying to use it like that. It, yeah, didn't sort of suit me, but it is worth keeping that in mind. For a quick conclusion on it, so it's a really interesting scope and for certain applications and certain people, it's gonna fit your cause perfectly. I don't think I'm gonna retire my NX8 from my 22 with it, but I still wanna try and run it for a couple of comps, spend a bit more time shooting with it. But realistically, this will end up on an FX impact that I have coming. Uh, and I'll run it as a day scope on that, which it's a lot more suited for its application. If you are in the market for one, I'd definitely try and have a look through one before you purchase one and make the decision there. Like, as I said, I, I really like using it, but it's not gonna be for everyone.